Thanks for coming to, to the, to the webcast. Uh, and I'm super excited to talk a little bit about what's going on in the prop tech scene in Scandinavia, a topic that I've been covering uh, in a lot of seminars the last uh, few years and give you a little bit of background about uh, prop tech Norway and what we're actually doing and what's, uh, what's behind our big uh, prop tech initiative. Uh, but just a little bit about my, my insight in this uh, the whole uh, industry is the question you can ask yourself is that is, is PropTech really a new industry uh, or is it uh, just a more efficient way to, to uh, create, uh, take great money from a fat dinosaur that got bad knees and got, lost its agility? And this is from the Oxford paper, PropTech uh, 3.0. And it's a good question because you have to think about is this really a new industry or is it just a more efficient way to do what we all have been doing for, for, the, last, uh, for the last years? And uh, really, uh, this is from a McKinsey report uh, and, and the different type of technologies here are not uh, the most important uh, thing. But, but the point is that they say that 99% uh, of the new growth in uh, the economy will come from disruptive technologies. And, uh, and that's just really... This is a, a little excerpt of what, uh, what kind of technologies you will think uh, you could use in, uh, in this sense. So, so there's a lot of new things coming into the market right now. But, um, and and uh, I, uh, probably like, uh, like the real estate industry will also be uh, affected by this. I'm, that's my opinion. I'm quite sure that it's going to be a big change in our industry as, as well. And uh, this is Amara's law, but it, it's, it's what we always say, like you tend to overestimate the effort, effect of technology in the short run, and then you underestimate it in the long run. So uh, it's kind of like the, like the backdrop. And we, in Proptech like Norway, we believe that Proptech will actually change the whole real estate industry in Norway and in, in general. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of intro about us and just give you a little bit of background about the corporate real estate industry in Norway, just, just to get the backdrop of what we're talking about. And then we're gonna explore the, the, the PropTech landscape in the Nordics and then in Norway in general. Uh, and, in, and then we will give you some specific examples of company that you could uh, watch out for. And then I'm going to give you just some few takeaways that we discussed with my Finnish and the Swedish colleagues at the Recotec uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, just a few key takeaways from, from the Nordics uh, that we would like to share with you. So, um, uh, just very short, who are PropTech Norway? Well, we're a broad PropTech initiative and, and um, I worked as a real estate lawyer for, for eight years working with big transactions and real estate development. And um, I uh, really didn't know a lot about technology back uh, a few years ago. Uh, a lot, uh, and, but, my, and, uh, but all the real estate owners, they came to us and to me and asked me, do you know any new cool uh, real estate tech uh, to invest in? You're a young guy, you probably know a lot of, uh, lot of cool technology. And at the time I really didn't know a lot about it. And then I met Anders Mjolset, who is the head of Mesh, which is one of the largest co-working spaces in the Nordics. And I told him that I had all these investors on my hand and they really didn't know anything to invest in. And Anders, on the other hand, is that he had the opposite problem because he knew all the startups and the tech scene, but they didn't really have any investors and especially no, no investors from the, from the real estate uh, side. Uh, so uh, what we did was to try to merge our networks and uh, and uh, make a broad initiative, and uh, we we were backed by Mesh, the, the co-working space, and uh, Young in Real Estate, and other organization I started for young professionals in real estate, and then we started uh, to bring in all the big corporates. So we took the six six big competitors actually in in the real estate development market, and. Took them, put them into the same room together and said that now we have to cooperate. And then we were backed by the Norwegian uh, real estate organization as well. So, so it's a broad initiative. But the whole point is to, to make a broad initiative owned by really not, not uh, with uh, like a big commercial interest, but, uh, with it, but to match the networks and just see, see what happens. 
And the first of November, we had the big event in Oslo as well with uh, all these uh, other speakers here with James Thursley and yeah, the biggest real estate developer from China actually coming. We work um, and uh, and all these other uh, top top speakers in the, in the real estate industry. So, what's our plan going forward? I, I think we're gonna do more of the summits, of course, but we're gonna try to spin it off and see what else can be done with uh, the Proplic uh, initiative. Uh, not only events and meetings, but uh, other uh, commercial uh, things could be done here as well with matchmaking and, and a lot of other things. So we have a good international talks and we're also talking a lot with uh, Stronghold in Sweden and with, uh, with the Proplic Finland and, and others to see if we could establish kind of a, a Nordic scene for, for Proplic because it's like the Baltics, like uh, the other countries are viewing us as one big region and then it's uh, hopeless to compete between the different countries. So they, we believe that we should cooperate on, on this. So just a short intro, like what's the, then the backdrop for this? Like how's the market in Norway? And there's a lot of things to be said about Norway. There's a great economy. Uh, we have uh, employment growth. We have uh, uh, good outlook for for the investments, but my main point here is that just the, the Norway's economy is really based on the oil and gas industry. And a couple of years ago, the oil and gas industry, which is really really good and high tech, it uh, had a crash in the oil prices. So a lot of the great uh, uh, engineers they, uh, lost their jobs and looked for new opportunities. And one thing I saw is that a lot of my friends working in the North Sea with, with oil and gas, they came into the real estate industry and they were used to really, really high tech uh, workplaces. And then they came into, for example, construction and they saw that it was so low tech. So I think the meta effect of all of these different people from the oil and gas industry with the high tech background coming into the real estate industry uh, not with, with one initiative, but like the whole impact with, uh, was uh, part of what sparked the whole PropTech wave in, in, uh, in uh, Norway. And um, uh, as you can see, just to, to show you that it's like a stable, good, uh, pretty traditional European uh, market with high prices in the cities and uh, then, then um, spread out over the next, uh, the, all the other things we have. And this is a big transaction market in Norway as well. So, uh, so there's a lot uh, going on in the market. This is a strong and stable market, but it's still a tech savvy market. A lot of technology coming into that uh, scene. So uh, that's just to give you a background. But uh, what's really interesting about the, the prop tech investments is that there are actually no active Norwegian virtual venture capital firms uh, taking advantage of all these uh, startups because there's so many great startups in uh, Norway, and but there's actually no big venture capital firms from Norway. Of course, there are foreign companies coming into the market, uh, but it's an interesting trend because you see that a lot of the best startups in Norway are actually invested in by the big uh, real estate owners or family offices who come in with a different mindset. They think that we're gonna use this product coming in as, in as a user of the product, trying it out and thinking, okay, this is really a great product, revolutionary product, let's buy into it. And it's just changes the whole mentality because then they're not in it to, to just gain the most out of this one startup, but they, they use it to develop their business as well. And that's like a really different take on, uh, on the whole uh, uh, investment scene, uh, I, I think. And uh, when we, talk about people in London about this, it's a very, very different kind of, uh, kind of scene that uh, they are in. So over to the prop tech side of it, and we can talk about this for hours, of course, but this is uh, just a short overview. And this is from Unisu, and we have actually cooperated a little bit with uh, Stronghold and Unisu to give them the numbers for, for Norway. But this is an interesting comparison in, in the Nordics because it's, uh, uh, this is the numbers uh, Unisio has uh, shown us for who, where, what country has the most PropTech startups or PropTech companies. And you see that Sweden dominates this, this poll, but uh, as well, Sweden has a lot of people in the country. So uh, if you see uh, the PropTech 
per country, you see that uh, fin no, Sweden is a, a big a big one, and uh, Finland is number two, Norway number three. I think the numbers of Denmark uh, is wrong because they were lacking a bit of uh, data uh, from that scene. But if you take this statistic and, uh, and take it per capita, you see actually that Finland is the most innovative uh, country per uh, inhabitant. And uh, Sweden comes uh, in second and, and Norway third. So, so uh, but all of this, if you put it in, in a uh, European table and look at the European countries uh, match with this, that's, then this, all of the Nordics are, come out pretty high in, uh, in Europe. I think Finland is the country with the highest density of uh, property startups actually in Europe. Sweden is number three and Norway is number five. So, so it's a lot of, uh, lot of uh, uh, interest in this. And it's a lot of, it says a lot about the Nordics as a tech and startup region. But also Denmark, I, I think they I believe, really believe these numbers are higher in Denmark. But the problem is that the uh, PropTech scene has not been organized that well yet. But, but uh, we have uh, probably Norway, uh, Denmark was founded uh, actually last, last week. So, so it's going to come a lot of new, new things out of this, uh, this kind of market because they have a really strong fintech side and, uh, and scene, and they have a lot of, uh, lot of innovation and startups. So this is going to be uh, come up. And Iceland, one PropTech startup, I, I don't know. It uh, <laughs> doesn't sound like a lot, but we don't really have a lot of people there on ground either. And these are some of the Norwegian or the Nordic companies going uh, internationally. So we have two Norwegians and two Swedish and two Finnish companies, but they're there are some companies that now are doing really well, and I will get back to the two Norwegian ones uh, later, but there's uh, also BuildSafe, for example, doing really well uh, in other countries. And, and uh, um, so we are trying to export our, uh, our PropTech scene to, to different regions as well. Uh, but the funny thing, like an observation with the whole PropTech scene in, uh, in the whole of um, whole of uh, Europe, uh, no, whole of Nordics, is that we really don't see the startups coming out of the real estate industry itself. And I speak mostly about Norway because that's the market I know best, but I know 50 or 60 great property startups in Norway and not one of them comes out of a real estate company in general. And the real estate company have a lot of money and experience in real estate and a lot of people uh, to, to talk to, but this is a paradox. Why, why the Nordic real estate scene cannot produce these kind of new ideas and spin-offs in that way? You see, uh, for example, Spacemaker broke out of uh, Link Architecture to make their ID. Why can that ID work in Link Architecture? Who knows? But, but, uh, but there's a lot of things to be done with, uh, with that kind of, uh, kind of scene. And you see, uh, so, so disruption starts with outsiders um, also in, in the Nordics. And you see, as Netflix or Airbnb or Uber did in their industries, came from the outside and changed a lot of what's, uh, what's going on there. But uh, I think that's something the companies should talk, uh, think about. But also, it's, uh, I think it's a part of a general trend in the international as well, that the, the the, uh, the various uh, different um, uh, uh, real estate companies are too traditional and too conservative. And I talked to some startups that said that's part of the reason that it's too conservative in, in the traditional real estate companies. So they feel like they have to break out to, to move on with their ideas. And this leads me to the Norwegian property scene, which is uh, what I, I um, know the best and if you want to screenshot the slide this is the one because uh, we we have uh, gathered a lot of top property companies in norway and uh, you see i will i'll get back to some specific examples um, in the next slides but and this uh, the, the organization uh, i just i just uh, put out some broad broad uh, headings and put in the some of the startups i know but uh, this could be uh, categorized in very different ways and uh, to also show that you would cover more of the, the scene. You see in smart buildings and IoT and, and uh, in AI as well, like uh, the top two uh, categories there, they, you see there's a lot of companies in Norway producing hardware like uh, disruptive technologies or really, really good 
analytics uh, tools, uh, physical uh, tools from Merso, or SpaceMaker could analyze huge uh, plots in uh, in uh, with with their AI technology. But you also have it's interesting because uh, people say that it's hard to produce good hardware in in Norway, and perhaps it's hard to produce them. But but uh, we have a strong engineering side which results in things like disruptive technologies with the world's smallest uh, smart sensor and air things that make the world's best radon measurer, but also measures uh, air quality. Um, and WheelMe, they have uh, actually invented a small wheel that could uh, move walls and beds in hospitals or you can move walls in buildings uh, so you could change it real time. So there's, uh, I think there's uh, some interesting moves there as well in terms of uh, people using uh, more uh, um, hard uh, hard tech. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's, not, it's hardware production in been done in, in Norway. And I think that comes out of the big strong tech and engineering side in uh, the country. And BIM is of course huge in, in Norway. So there's a lot of company doing the BIM uh, optimization, and uh, and all new buildings are put in uh, a BIM model as well. And this it makes this and this has helped fuel the VR companies in Norway, this uh, Dimension 10, for example, who's doing really well because it's easy to extract the data and then you can visualize it much better if, if it's all in, in the model. And uh, disruptive technologies as well can put up their sensors and view it in, in the BIM model. So, so this all uh, kind of uh, comes together in a big, um, in a big way. And then you have all the co-working scenes as well. There's a lot of co-working uh, companies starting up in Norway, and you see see all of these uh, small ones. Uh, but uh, if I should highlight one, uh, Mesh is doing really, really well, and haven't made like a real community in uh, in their spaces down in Oslo city center, and expanding now to Copenhagen and other uh, other places. So there's a lot of things to be done in that scene. And this is uh, the, the real estate agents made their own PropTech map. This is, I don't know, half of these companies. And this is because this is more of the, uh, for, for the real estate brokers selling the residential uh, real estate. But there are some um, uh, interesting ones here as well, like Huesli, I thought I know. You see uh, that uh, that makes it easier to lease, uh, lease uh, premises <coughs> proper. Yeah, that's gonna uh, proper. They're gonna um, change the industry for for the real estate uh, brokers and 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 they make you be able to sell uh, for yourself. But I I don't think it's gone huge yet. Uh, we will see. And uh, you see in the top uh, top left corner, you see Finn.no. That's the biggest like block it essay in Sweden. It's the one that's. Uh, has digitalized uh, the most of the real estate in Norway in the past couple of years. So that's a lot of interesting things there. But to give you just a few examples, you see Spacemaker, that's the, one of the companies that uh, people really think that's going to be one of the next uh, big unicorns from Norway. And uh, what they do is they take a plot, uh, what you usually do, you go to a, to a architect and you show them the plot, the big uh, big building project, and you say that what's the, the best uh, thing to do at that, this this big plot, and the architect will probably think about sixty or seventy combinations in the head, and they will draw out two or three ones, and uh, and um, and then it will show you the result with some residential in one place, what so some uh, offices, other places, and a park in the middle, and what SpaceMaker does, they test 10 billion combinations of how you could utilize, uh, utilize a big uh, plot. And it, it, when you get the results, you actually feel like, oh, okay, this is the one uh, to go to. And you th think that we should have thought of that. That was a smart solution. But, but the mind can't process 10 billion combinations. You really have to uh, use the solution to, to find it in the first place. And then it will visualize it uh, for you in 3D and put it on the zoning map. So it's uh, so and you use statistics saying that this will give you seventy percent more sunlight. This will give you thirty percent less uh, noise, and uh, give you three more apartments in the same uh, within the same building project. So it's been a huge success with uh, the market in Norway. It's uh, just uh, expanded ex expansionally, and 
another one to watch is uh, Immerso, and they do 3D scanning of buildings because in Norway we have everything in the BIM model, and then you can 3D scan it really well and use AI to uh, to tell you where uh, the deviations from the BIM model is, and then you can do this runningly in the building project and. Uh, Stadsbygd, one of the non-commercial real estate owners from the Norwegian government in Norway, they, they actually said that they're going to save 100 million kroners in one project using this technology. So now the market just went crazy for this product as well. It's something you should uh, really check out. Uh, the prime minister even was at their, uh, their offices and uh, said it was a great product. And of course, you have disruptive technologies. I think this is the most well-known one from Norway. They make the world's smallest minute sensor. Um, I got the test kit myself. I, I put it up in my office. It took me two minutes or five minutes to set up the whole thing and check out the software resolution. And I, I even worked in a law firm, so I couldn't even bring someone to help me. I, I just did it myself and took five minutes. And when you don't have to wire all the cables, it's cuts to your cost by, by the 10 times. And uh, if it's that efficient as well, it's, uh, it's a really big success. And they were actually named the best PropTech startup at MIPIM uh, this year. And uh, at their PropTech event, Expo Real, like the Real Estate Innovation Network, said that uh, disruptive technologies was regarded by the, as the top PropTech in Europe by 50 individual uh, PropTech experts. So they're really well regarded. And then you have air things doing, making the world's biggest, best radon sensor. This is great, but, but uh, they also found out that they could measure air quality like no one else. And they made this small, simple device that's also been a big sales success. And then you have Norwegian Unlock. Uh, and Unlock, they are really trying to revolutionize the whole, uh, the whole uh, key, uh, just the key that you have to your house. And it's something that's been done, they're starting to do in the US and in the, with ring.com, but that's tied to Amazon and new key as well as a good startup. But, but, uh, but unlike us is that they give you a smart lock on your door. And then if someone wants to deliver to your house or anything else, then you can do it really easily. And it's really stands out in this, uh, Segment as Shipstead, one of the biggest uh, investors in Norway, have invested in them, and they are doing really well uh, right now. So it's one to w watch as well. And it's really, really funny because uh, to sum it up, like you see the Gartner's hype curve with all the emerging technologies coming in, uh, and then you see what's matured. And in prop, like the only matured technology is actually virtual reality, like the VR. That's one you can use day to day in the, in your industry. But all the others are coming. But you see that. 12% of the world's venture capital is put into the left column there in all these new technologies and all the virtual reality has actually matured. Then there's going to be a lot of things happening in the next couple of years that's going to have a big impact in the real estate industry. So the takeaways, I think the, I've been a lot around the world at property conferences and I think the products and the tech you see in Scandinavia are just awesome. It's a uh, high tech and it's high quality. And uh, sometimes you really, if there's Scandinavians uh, online, then you have to think that we have to often go to other places to see what they have there and then come back because it's easier to, to show uh, how good the products are if you've done something uh, abroad. And uh, we talked about to a lot of good uh, and great Nordic crop tech companies, but they really don't promote themselves like, uh, like they should, but they should actually uh, be out there like the American ones and sell the, uh, uh, their products because they really can find, you can find great prop tech companies in Norway with, with no promotion or nothing at all. You have to dig them up yourself. And that we shouldn't have too much respect if you go uh, if you go to the other countries as well. Uh, this is a story from uh, Magnus Svantegård in the Stronghold. But he said that when they launched Dacia in the UK, they thought they were like a Swedish third division team going to the big league in uh, in uh, England. It was going to be so hard. And then they found out that 10% of the customers in the UK actually paid the Dacia bill by manual check it's like absurd in in norway so they thought that okay that level of tech is probably not that high in the other countries as well so to sum it up well vikings are coming and uh i think we're gonna do really well internationally as well so thank you
Thanks. That was uh, my my quick uh, presentation. But um, uh, if there's any questions, I see there's a lot of things posted in uh, more in the chat than the the, the presentation there. But uh, uh, yes, in uh, Denmark, uh, it's something that someone asked, and, and uh, yeah, uh, this uh, Paul uh, Stubchair, uh, you have to check him out on LinkedIn. He's actually starting probably Denmark uh, right now. So, uh, so um, if you are Danish or no Danish startups that define themselves as uh, fintech or something else, then uh, get them into the the proptech thing. Um, because uh, because I think there, there's a big uh, advantage to uh, being uh, together in this in the Nordic region and to define the startups as profitable and, uh, and not uh, not startups in in general. Yeah. So <clears throat> another question on uh, email, but. Uh, um, what I think is the going to be the best new Norwegian companies? I, I don't know. It's uh, uh, the ones I presented now. It's uh, the ones I really, really believe in. Uh, there's other ones as well, like Dimension Ten. There's the Norwegian VR company, and there's tons of VR companies. But Dimension Ten actually made uh, get, got a contract with uh, the building authorities in Norway, uh, so you can hand in your Sony plan in VR uh, uh, and you can go in it with the planning authorities and I worked with a big uh, a lot of big uh, big um, a lot of big uh, construction projects and big development projects and if you can just visualize everything in 3D and see it as it is it's so much easier to work with the, the government and the authorities and combine this with with space makers technology as well uh, the authorities love it because they say that this is the objectively what's uh, like a good solution for for the property, and if you can objectively say, find a good solution for the for a property and you can visualize it in three D so you know how it looks, then it's so much easier to uh, to um, to just. Uh, um, to to convince the uh, the development side uh, to to try to do uh, as you uh, you like it. <clears throat> yeah, so there's a lot of things for residential as well, and I didn't go into that because I work with mostly co commercial real estate. And there's of course tons of platforms. Proper they are uh, doing uh, the different kind of. Uh, uh, different kind of uh, ways to sell things yourself uh, in in the market as a real estate broker, and it's I think they have a great, like great ad uh, platform, and they do like a lot of uh, good things, and they uh, promote themselves well. But I don't think really people are using it yet because when you're selling your only apartment, and people are suddenly they really at the end of it they want a broker anyway, so. So, uh, but I think that technologies like that will develop. And there's a company, uh, it's on my slide called uh, Steed, tavla.no. Um, they are uh, the board uh, for the board in the, in the co-ownerships. And they, they put up, um, because in all these different uh, uh, corporate buildings that we work in, you have this information uh, slide in the, when you get in the building. But if you go home to your apartment, then it's just, Chaos. People put up notes, put up everything there, and they have made this uh, board that you can have. It's really uh, cheap for the board of the co-ownership to to install it, and uh, you, they own it themselves. And then they have this platform where you can SMS and send the uh, things that you you are thinking about into the um, into the at the screen. And then the this really strict HMS uh, laws in Norway as well. So. So uh, you get them rotating on the side. So the co board of the co-ownership has done their part. So they are free of liability. And then they actually finance it with local commercials. And it's really smart because if you have a local coffee shop that just open up, uh, they don't uh, promote themselves to people in another part of the city. They just want the neighbors. And if they, these boards are in all of the big residential buildings right next door to this cafe, then they can say, okay, I want to target 
the the buildings 200 meters from my apartment and I'm from my store and then I can uh, have a cold word cheap coffee if you're a neighbor and and then you get them in there so this has gone really well I think they are discussing with a lot of big big real estate uh, brokers uh, right now so it's interesting uh, mm -mm. So why is Norway so high on AI? Uh, I think that um, I think there's still a big uh, engineering uh, community in uh, Trondheim, like in in uh, mid mid Norway, and uh, they have been very very strong on the tech side there. So they haven't really commercialized it uh, very much yet, but but it's been driven by the uh, oil and gas industry as well because. If you see their build models and what they do, then then you just get blown away, and you're thinking this could be done in the real estate sector as well. I saw this video from Maersk uh, drilling. It's like um, where how they worked on the construction of a uh, of a oil platform, and and uh, and they had these VR glasses on, and uh, the AR glasses, and they went uh, in AR and and. Uh, and uh, fixed uh, everything and uh, took notes there and then in AR. Uh, so, um, so uh, and I thought that this Maersk product, of course it can be applied to, to real estate, but in the real estate, the margins has been so high. So it's, people haven't really started using it yet, but in the oil and gas industry, the costs are so high that they have been doing a lot of things to, to if, uh, make it more efficient actually. Um, <laughs> so uh, a new question is that uh, what's my plan for WeWork? Well, uh, well, I'm gonna head WeWork into the Nordics, Baltics, and uh, and um, the Netherlands. And uh, our plan is that I'm head of the real estate team, so we will of course look at the real estate in these regions so that's uh, kind of the plan for for us uh, right now we are i'm officially starting the first of january so i really don't have too much information but it's obvious that we are interested in uh, great buildings and cbd in the major cities so we work doesn't really think about countries they think about city regions so it would be in the nordics typically oslo stockholm copenhagen and helsinki and uh, top buildings in the cbd of course that's that's where we are looking for so uh, any tips just uh, send them to me and I will uh, process it in the system and um, they're in full effect from the first of uh, January and and a side note as well I think that the market for co-working and flex office is just huge uh, it's like one percent nowhere right now so like my co-host and uh, like my and good friend in uh, in uh, um, in probably Norway Anders is the head of uh, Head of Mesh, which is the real uh, biggest co-working space here and, uh, in in Norway, but but he really understands the model. Like we we go for different segments, and there's plenty of space for 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 everyone right now as it is. So I think that's uh, so so it's I don't think they will threaten each other right like that. Um, how do you see the Nordic prop tech community strengthen collaboration? Uh, well, we just started discussing it, and the guy who's most uh, driving this is Magnus Svantegård from Stronghold, and he actually named this uh, prop tech initiative Nordic prop tech and not uh, prop tech Sweden. So uh, strategically, but uh, but um, we talked about Magnus and uh, and uh, Hannu Rantanen when we were in. Uh, at Recotech and we were thinking that we should do more of a Nordic collaboration because we have the same type of clients, we have the same type of products and it's so natural for Norwegian big companies, prop tech startups to think, okay, let's go to Sweden and Denmark first. Like they could grow organically into those countries, but if they're going to Germany, of course that's a good move as well, but then they have to go they have to really, really uh, find someone new and like start it up from scratch. So I think the Nordics is a region that should go more together like they do in the Baltics. Like uh, an investor from the US or even from Nordics wouldn't really care that much about uh, Vilnius or Tallinn or Riga. Like if there was like some kind of internal competition there, it would just weaken like the region. So they're trying to collaborate uh, a bit, I think, and, and we should do the same here. 
and we really want to collaborate with uh, the Danish scene as well um, and get them into it and uh, so what we were thinking is that we could do big uh, events perhaps jump from city to city for example Oslo, Stockholm, Helsinki, Copenhagen and and, uh, and then do side events as well but because we all do our own events but we could do some something together um, with that and I think it's important that this comes out as like broad initiatives like ours and the ones in the other countries as well. I, of course, there's a lot of commercial uh, platforms and others trying to take the property scene. I think it's a really big strength that it is more of a non-profit initiative coming out to the industry itself and shared with a lot of the, the real estate owners and organizations and, and other people that are really interested and not just people that are there to make the most out of it uh, economically because that's what we've been doing with our structure as well we haven't till now made anything of it uh, not that it doesn't generate an, uh, a revenue but it's uh, what we have uh, given someone else uh, we have someone else to take the risk and to get the rewards from it but the whole thing is about uh, creating this big community and, uh, and making new opportunities for everyone so if we have a much better platform that everyone could uh, interact with and i think it's the cake just going to be uh, bigger for for everyone it's going to be tons of new opportunities like like yeah, we already see in norway like the all the prop tech companies are starting to cooperate and if you could do that nordically as well uh, probably some companies in sweden and denmark and finland that would match perfectly with the norwegian companies i don't know but i really don't have the platform and the knowledge yet um, and uh, the UNISO is actually making a kind of communication forum platform uh, right now that could be, be good because a lot of us are in the, the different WhatsApp groups for the Nordics, but to have a one platform could be, be a smart move. So, yeah, that's uh, my thought of the, how we can strengthen the collaboration. And I think uh, with social media and, uh, and everything we have right now, it's uh, much easier to do it as well. Um, so uh, it's easy to keep the communication going, but we should all try to share all the knowledge. And that's what I do. And if you, any of you need like my list of PropTech startups in Norway, I'll happily share it to you for, uh, for free. And that's the, the whole uh, thought of it. Like we, we do these things, um, like it makes no sense that I, even though the list itself has a value, it's better for me to give it out to everyone and then it will generate new business uh, opportunities perhaps. So yeah, let's, let's do that. So uh, any European initiatives? Well, we are working with, uh, with um, Expo Real uh, at the, the Real Estate Innovation Network. I think that's uh, a great uh, the PropTech startup competition they have at uh, the Real Estate Innovation Network is really good. And we were at Munich at uh, Expo Real this year, and it was just really amazing. I like compared to many other conferences, I actually learned a lot of new things uh, at that event. So it's uh, it was a good platform focused uh, on. Uh, on uh, serious discussions and, and uh, good content. And it was uh, different. A lot of the events are focused more about uh, networking, uh, but this was uh, very, very different. So yeah, so uh, I think that's good. So uh, that's, that's my cue. I'm 10 minutes over my time. So um, thank you very much. And uh, hopefully we speak soon. And uh, if you see, you can see my email at uh, that uh, in the last slide. So if you just uh, have any questions or need any info or intros to a cool Norwegian property startups, just let me know and uh, see you. Thanks. Henrik, on behalf of Global PropTech Online, thank you so much for your time and hosting a keynote today. We really appreciate it and I wish you all a nice day. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.